Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today what I want to do is to do some old pastels and to try new techniques for old pastels. So a few weeks ago I've done this painting with old pastels. So it's inspired by a painting from Monet. And I had some trouble with the layering. You can see here that the quality of the layering is not that good. And then I tried here to layer with a um, paint knife, with one of, of those. And it actually worked pretty well even with the low quality old pastels. So today I'm going to try a new painting with old pastels but using this technique here and I'm going to see if it works and let you know what I think about this new technique. So let's take a new page here. I'm going to do this here. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Okay, perfect. Um, I have a reference image on my phone and it's a sea... It's a seascape. So let's start. I'm gonna use the Jackson Old Pastels, those. I have lots of colors, 36 colors, but the colors are not uh, super quality, like I said. Okay, so now let's start. So I'm going to start by blocking up the shapes, just using normal techniques. So first I'm going to do the horizon line, which is kind of there. And then we have mountains here. And another block of mountains here. So one tricky thing with, with all pastels is that it's pretty hard to draw any kind of details. So you really have to block in the shapes and try to, to be as precise as you can with the shapes. Then there is some foliage in the foreground here. Okay, um, so everything is very dark in the picture, so I'm going to start with a dark brown in the background. And this time I'm also going to try to keep the lighter parts light, because I think that was one of my problems when I was doing all pastels with low quality old pastels is that it's really hard to put some lighter tones on top of um, on top of darker ones. So you have to think a little bit more like in in watercolors or non opaque medium. So now I'm layering the the sea. And I'm starting with the grey because I want to put on top some darker, different shades of, of blue and see how I can use different blues to create an interesting, interesting sea and to have different um, and to add to the depth of the sea. I'm actually going to put also a tiny bit of white in some places where I want it to stay very light. And the, the white will add will work as a kind of a blender here. When you're using good quality white, it really goes on top. But when you're using poorer quality white, it adds it works as a kind of a blender. You have to be careful because here I'm I'm starting to blend the green and I don't want to have too much green on my C. That's not really the point. Usually when I'm using better quality oil pastels, I'm blending with some stumps or some tortillions. But today I'm going to be blending with this white and it works pretty well. So for now I'm just using a kind of normal procedure 
Um, this is how I usually approach any old pastel painting. For now it stays very usual and after I'm gonna try to if I if I can't layer as I want I'm gonna try my technique with my pen's knife. And it's very hard to achieve a smooth result with lower quality oil pastels and it's hard to keep them brightness of the colors and it's hard to have very saturated colors so that's why I'm layering quite a lot and for now my layering works pretty well so I'm quite happy with that it's not perfect because you can see that every time I'm layering some parts of the of the underneath layers are getting away so that's one issue I'm facing right now, is that it's hard to really put the color on top. I'm kind of scraping the colors underneath. And I have a lot of... So I'm gonna start using my paint knife because I have lots of little parts of the old pastels that are not going into the paper that are just sitting on top. So I'm hoping that with my palette knife I can also encourage the opasto to sink into the paper and keep some of this vibrancy. So instead of scraping the opasto, I'm pushing it into the into the paper and I can also add some kind of details by scraping but only at the places where I want to actually scrape. Not scraping everywhere. to darken these things here and I'm gonna use my dark blue for blending here and I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of texture by scraping some of it off Okay, so for now it's working pretty well. What I want to do now is to add some more white here. And I think that would be pretty hard. So now I'm scraping off some white of my stick and I'm placing it where I want it to go. And then I'm pushing it down onto the paper to really have the white going where I want it to go because I have kind of a wave form forming here which is working pretty nice so I'm gonna push this idea here of having the waves kind of crashing onto the onto the shore <coughs> like so and now I'm gonna darken the shore but also put some grey because there will be some water reflecting on top and then the upper part will be darker here and also some black I'm going, I think I'm gonna add some more white here so same I'm scraping the white placing it on the paper and then pushing it down And the small parts I'm pressing kind of everywhere to give this impression of the of the foam going kind of in all directions like so. And I think I'm gonna add some more blues here because we have this wave motion going on here. So I can have some more blue. 
and pressing it down on the paper. Like so. And all this part here, I'm going to add my foreground green. All the parts that are not the sea right now, it's going to be my foreground foliage. So for this, I'm just for now putting this dark green and then I'm going to use a dark blue also to keep it kind of coherent with the with the rest of the piece. And a little bit of the grey. I'm trying to keep my palettes limited to help having the whole piece coherent. Because that's also the issue when you have lots of colors. It can kind of go in every direction and then you can't see the coherence of the whole thing anymore. So I'm trying to avoid this here. And I think I'm going to add some texture by using the same technique of scraping small bits here and there and pushing them onto the paper just to add a little bit more texture to, the, to this foliage in the foreground. It adds kind of almost like a 3D effect which works pretty well and it, it also enhances the, the contrast and the, the color power because it's completely straight out of the stick in a way so it's a very powerful color you just have to make sure you don't put it in the wrong places and if you have it in the wrong place um, it's nice to have a, a brush, a soft brush, to push it out of the place you don't want it to go. And put it where you want it to be. And now I need to take care of my sky. So there are quite a few clouds on the sky. So first I'm gonna make sure my colors are clean. Because, for instance, I had green on, on my grey, so I don't want my sky to have some green on it. So I'm making sure I'm scraping off all of the green out of my grey. And now I'm going to go over this. And I'm, I'm not going to put it everywhere. And I'm going to put also some of this beige tone. It's called pale pink on the sky to give this this um, timid sun effect and also I'm having some dark blue same making sure there is no green on my dark blue some dark blue for some of the of the clouds here sky is really hard because you want to show the different the, the kind of dramatic lightning um, the dramatic light and still have a kind of coherent sky so it's very difficult to show the texture of the sky and to show also the, what's happening on the sky, this, the light and the dark with all pastels because I really don't have I don't really have techniques for doing this so I'm, I'm trying and I think I can darken even more the sky because I've done a very um, the rest of the piece is pretty dark, so I think the clouds can be a little bit darker to be coherent with the how dark the rest of the of the piece is. Here I'm using a flatter one because I don't want to have too many texture to them cloud itself. I want the sky to have texture but I don't want the texture to show through too much into a single um, a single cloud. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it done. It was a really quick old pastel painting trying to 
trying out a new technique for all pastels and painting with not so good quality all pastels. So this is how the final result looks like. And you can see all the texture. You can see for instance here on the white where I used the paint knife to put the white texture. And same for the foliage in the foreground. And how I could layer and really push the, the old page into the paper thanks to the paint knife. So if you're trying old pastels and you find you have troubles with layering and troubles with having a very bright color and putting some light colors on top of dark, paint knives are really a nice way to do that and to achieve nice results with your old pastels. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you some ideas for how to use your old pastels. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!